welcome to today's episode of, well, book reviews. So, um, just to tell you before we start, I got a new load of books, five books actually, so they will be reviewed in the near future. Uh, the Diver, the, I forget what it's called, in Diversion series? I, I'm not sure, I need to check. And the Alex Rider. And I did review an Alex Rider before this, so you might want to check that out, but there's a new book of Alex Rider coming out. Oh, uh, well, it's the first one, actually. I read the ninth one, so I'm sort of met, uh, back. Okay, it's sort of reversed. But anyway, without further ado, let's just get right into today's review, which is on Lokai, which is a, um, well, basically, it's a Marvel book, which means that Marvel paid, I believe, uh, a writer, I think this is how it works, um, to publish this book. And um, this book was pretty tempting for me because of all Marvel characters, and I don't watch a lot of Marvel movies, but from what I've heard about them, Loka is my favorite. And so I decided to just check this book out. And basically the book talks about the past of Lokai before he became the evil villain which he was depicted in the movies. Although I'm sure some of you out there are uh, big fans of Lokai, which is, I, he's my favorite character personally too. And he's very likable in my opinion, but um, I'll give you a summary and my thoughts on the book. So a summary of the book. Well, basically this book is focused on his childhood friendship, which is the trigger event of the book, his friendship with Amanda, which is the only person he knows who actually thinks Lokai's magic might actually is be a good thing instead of a bad thing, which is what most people think. And so after they cause accidentally the destruction of one of the most prized possessions in Asgard, Amor is banished to Earth, which is called Midgard in the book, and slowly, basically, supposed to wither away and die into nothingness because there's no magic on Earth. And uh, so, after a while, basically, Loka just fades into the shadow of his universally adored brother, Thor, much more and more. And he sent on a mission to Earth, investigating a series of murders, actually, possibly by Asgardian magic. And he realizes the murder is actually his long lost old friend, Amanda. I think I'm not pronouncing that, just let me check. Amora, yes, Amora, okay. I have a hard time remembering Amanda, Amora, you know. And so basically the murder is Amora and Loka starts plotting with her he, and he almost decides to take back Asgard. He suddenly realizes he has the ability to raise dead people. So dead people, he can raise them from the dead. That's why they're called the living dead. And um, so basically, uh, eventually he realizes Amanda's, Amora's plan, excuse me, is to betray him and take Asgard for herself. And so he stops Amanda. I mean, why do I keep calling her Amanda? This is weird, right? I guess it's just a habit because throughout the book, I just pretty much like to put simple names for characters and read along. Anyway, back to the book. And so he manages to stop Amanda, but I will not tell you what is the ending, what really happened. But I will say this. For those of you who want to read a typical teenager fast-paced action story, this is something I would recommend, but I gotta tell you, the ending is not satisfying. And I'm not, I'm not spoiling the book when I say, well, I'm not gonna tell you whether or not he was named king by his father, Odin, which is basically a whole driving point from the story, but I will tell you, in the end, he become a villain. Whether it was a king or not, he became a villain. And I'm sure some of you who've watched um, movies involving Thor will know that he didn't become, uh, whether he became king or not, but in the book, I won't tell you, so, because it's not different, though, but anyway, so, this book is not really satisfying, because in the end, he becomes a villain, like, I'll just read you this passage here, um, sorry, okay, he would serve no man but himself, no heart but his own. That would be his choice. 
he could be the witch. Be the witch and know everything. So that's just uh, the ending of the book, the last line of the book. And as you can tell, he becomes the villain. However, what we do know from the book is how he became a villain. That like he actually wasn't just born a villain and was created. And I thought this concept was really interesting. And I do admire the author because it is something to hard... It's Because it, I've written a couple of books myself and it's pretty hard to work with material that already has a definitive ending. which And the ending isn't necessarily good. So that is... I applaud the author for doing this because it's really hard to make the the character very likable if we all know what's the ending he's gonna be a bad guy so that's something this book did great what else well this book definitely creates a lot of tension a uh, good dialogue um i feel like the characters all have their the characters are well made i think they're well forged the reason i say that is very realistic you can completely feel them um, because they all have their problems, their something wrong with them, their history. Um, so the characters are really good. What I thought this book could have done a little bit better, they should have created more drama, more suspense, and a little bit more action. And um, the reason I say this is, I know compared to books like Tom Sawyer or Sherlock Holmes or... Um, or uh, A Farewell to Arms by Ernest Hemingway. This book has a lot of action. But for this type of book, this is what you need, right? This is a classical, this is a classical fast-paced action, you know, as you would describe it in filmmaking terms, theme park book, right? It has, it's usually fast-paced, lots of action, there's a definitive villain, which there isn't in this book. And, well, a Amora, but we don't know that till like about two thirds of the book is over. So in this type of book, like Alex Ryder is a typical example. Alex Ryder, Maze Runner, Percy Jackson, just read any of them, right? It's hurdle after hurdle after hurdle. So I feel like this book doesn't create enough suspense for this type of book. And for this you know particular category of books i think they need a lot uh, more suspense because think about it the main challenges in this book first he wants to become king right that's a, a goal the whole time but they only tell you that till the end so we can count that as one what else um well let's see stopping a more that's a challenge right excuse me solving the murder cases that's another challenge Proving to his father that he's worthy of being king. Another challenge. Only four challenges. While you go to the, you know, maze runner, for example. They are in the maze. Challenge number one, he needs to realize where he is. Challenge number two, can he get out? Challenge number three, can he stay alive? Like, there's, there's like, maze runner is just one example of many. For this type of book, you have to have more drama, suspense. Whether it is through dialogue or physical events that may put the character in danger um but basically to conclude this book is uh definitely a recommendation for those of you who read but if you're really just looking for a quick fast-paced full of action um satisfying really comforting book then this is not my go-to for that. I would go through any teenager book. But I, having said this, I would recommend all of you guys to read this because even though the satisfying ending is not, it's really interesting to see a perspective told from the villain. And you should really see how the writer actually makes you be on the villain side, which is not something you see often. So conclude, I give this book 4.3 out of 5 only because they could have done more challenges, created better dialogue, more tension through the dialogue is what I'm trying to say. And I would recommend reading. So uh, thank you for your time. I hope you enjoyed my book review. And if you did, go ahead, place a like and subscribe. If you have questions or thoughts on the book, I would love to hear them. Just uh, say it in the comments down below. And thanks for watching Chapter 1.